Who the Wild Things Are with Ryan McGuire. You gotta listen to your body. Oh my God, maybe, you know, I could get out there. I could do this. Let's take a ride. Find your wild side. Real stories. See with your own eyes. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna have the best time out here. Yeah, I was in tears. I was just like, that's the best, man. Welcome back, baby. Episode 14 of Who the Wild Things Are. Thank you guys for joining. Um, this is going to be a very special episode. Uh, tonight, we have a very special guest, Quinn, and she definitely fits in with the other guests we've had. And what I mean by that is she's someone from the outdoor industry that has turned her passion into a priority. Uh, I'm super excited for everyone to get to hear her story tonight. And uh, yeah, just thanks for thanks for everyone joining on. Uh, with that said, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get Quinn in here. Get this thing started. Hey, what's going on, Quinn? How's it going? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. This is funny. I've never done this for my van before. <laughs> wow. It's like uh, it's kind of I think they call it meta. Like when you talk about something and you're also doing it. Yeah. Um, it's very pretty, interesting. It's oh okay. Well, this is my cat. <laughs> <laughs> that is the beauty of doing this in such a small space in my van is I've got two sweet little children. Um, my cat's Atlas is inside of his little cat igloo and then Otto is just chilling. <laughs> right on. Yeah, so that is, they just finished dinner. They had their afternoon walk outside. We're in Utah and now they're chilling. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's sweet. It's it's cool that you guys uh, you guys share that little space. I know when uh, Willow and I were in Lady May, it was, uh, I felt like we were never closer. Like when you live yeah. in that small space with your animals, you're like just attached at the hip. You really are. And you like understand their like little idiosyncrasies and it's like a fun, I don't know. It's so fun. <laughs> right on. It's oh, also quick. funny to like see the looks that people give you when they're in the dash and you're like at the grocery store and they're like, um, are those your cats? <laughs> like, yeah. That's so awesome. I actually, I saw somebody post a video of your, your cats today. It looked like they were like sunbathing in the front. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. That's like what they do every single day is when they're in the van and I go to the grocery store, um, they just sit in front and cuddle and sunbathe and like stare at people. <laughs> I have like a little note in my van, like on the dash being like, they're in a, a weather controlled vehicle. They're fine. Please don't break my windows. <laughs> right. Right. Did you get them together or, or were they like from different families? Yeah, so about two years ago, I rescued them in Chicago when I was living in an apartment. Um, and so I rescued them in Chicago, and then they were both together. So they were found on, on the streets of Chicago together. Um, mm -hmm. And then I got them, and then I had them for a month. Um, and then pretty much the pandemic happened, and then we started road tripping around all over the place. <laughs> right on. Well, that's a great segue. So I guess my first question is, like, Quinn, were you – were you made to be a van lifer? Like, was this destiny something you were always going to do? I think yes. And I think that is the same for a lot of my van life friends um, in the community is every single person had this as just like a little dream that just like manifested and they just like have growing it every single year. And so I was kind of like, when the pandemic happened, I was living in Chicago. I, well, I just moved to Los Angeles. So I was three weeks into moving into Los Angeles um, as an event producer, produced an event in New York. And then all of a sudden the world shut down and I was stuck in Chicago because um, my boss at the time said like batten down the hatches, figure it out. We're all working from home. And then it was slowly the return of like, okay, I have my cats. Everything I own is in Los Angeles. And we like slowly started renting cars when everything was okay. And I think I rented six cars during the pandemic. I moved across the country four times times um a lot in my hyundai tucson and that's how the cats got used to living in a vehicle is because i was literally traveling around so much moved in with my dad um in colorado he's a peach farmer and then pretty much was like you know what i'm gonna buy a van um i see a ton a ton of people on tiktok who do it they do it with cats i think i'm gonna do it and then um, I had a friend pass away, and and after that, I was like, life is too short. I absolutely have to do this. There's like, it's either now or never. Wow, what? Yeah, that's an amazing perspective. It's it's crazy how there are things in life that are like on your heart or on your mind, and 
you kind of are wishy-washy and then you have some kind of life-changing event that really just kicks your butt into high gear and you're like, yeah, no more waiting. It's time to get this done. I think the biggest thing too is like, if you don't do it now, you're never going to do it and you're always going to wonder. So is it more painful to wonder the rest of your life or is it more painful to do what you want to do immediately, figure out that awkwardness, that painfulness, that emotions of leaving as opposed to always wondering. So that's kind of what I made the ultimate decision. I was like, I don't want to wonder the rest of my life I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, so let's dig into your awkwardness, your painfulness. What was, what was it like when you were like, okay, I've decided I am Van Life Quinn. Did you start shopping immediately for vans? Because I know when I went nomadic, it was like trying to pick which vehicle I wanted to start out with because there's VW vans, there's truck campers, there's people that live in literally Priuses. Like I've yep. seen everything. So what did that process look like for you? Yeah, so pretty much what happened is I stumbled upon a woman. Um, her handle is Divine on the Road. And I started listening to her podcast. I saw her on Pinterest. I saw her on Instagram. She's been living in her van for four years. And I st and pretty much she was in a very similar situation. She was in the event industry. She's from Chicago, lived in Chicago, um, took the risk and just, and just did it. And I loved listening to her podcast and she talked about how tall she was and she wanted more of like a newer cargo vehicle. So she talked about having the Ford Transit, in which case I was like, okay, I'm five, nine. The Ford Transit allows me to, um, sleep across instead of sleeping like the, with the sprinter where you have to sleep this way. Um, and the four transits, I just think they're super reliable. Like my most viral, I mean, viral video is the six reasons why I purchased a Ford Transit. I love this vehicle so much. I've been trying to honestly find a new one um, to potentially do a new build, but I can't find them anywhere. So if anyone knows of a Ford Transit, I can buy. Um, but it was, I, I like the ProMaster because of the, sim, like the, sim, uh, the symmetry of the ProMaster, but it's two-wheel drive. I wanted an all-wheel drive. I also do adventure photography and traveling all over the place. I mean, I've busted my shocks on this thing. I've hit trees in this thing twice. <laughs> I've had some... I've done some dumb stuff, but all in all, it's been amazing. So that's, so the vehicle that I chose, I wanted to stand in. I wanted it to be reliable. I wanted it to have a warranty. Um, and the, the transit, I just, I loved it. I, the, I, okay, but I have a confession. I did not test it before I drove it. I literally purchased it over the phone because that is the only way that you can purchase a van these days is you purchase it literally over the phone and then um, you pick it up. And so that is the only way you can purchase a van. There's no driving anymore. <laughs> like it's just wow. like, please let me put a deposit on this immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, even when I sold Lady May, I was getting people asking to put deposits on it and it, you yeah. know, it didn't drive. Like people mm -hmm. are that people are that inclined to get a vehicle that they could live in that they were That's like, let me put a deposit down now. So the market is certainly crazy. And I think Part of it is because people like you do such a good job of like showing the lifestyle and, and everything that it has to offer that a lot of people now are really wanting to get into it. And I think one of the biggest things that I want to showcase is the reality of van life. Um, I think you see beautiful content, which there are some incredible creators and they'll tell you to your page. Like if you want to see the nitty gritty, go to someone else. Like I, they love creating beautiful comment or uh, content. Whereas like, I'm showing you a little bit more of like the nitty gritty. Like I'm showing you genuinely safety, where you're going to the bathroom in the weirdest scenarios. Um, all the dumb shit that I've done, all of the stuff that has happened to me while living in the van. I mean, even like an hour ago, I was walking my cat's. And I was cleaning up my van and all of a sudden this guy sets up his chair, maybe a hundred yards from me, sets up his chair, doesn't watch the sunset, is watching me videotape something. And I'm like, I grab my little, I have a monocular, just like a one binocular, like a Pirates of the Caribbean thing. And I literally grabbed my monocular and I was like, why is he staring right now? Like, this is super creepy. So I'll probably end up leaving the spot that I'm in. But that's just, that's van life. Like, you're always on your guard. No matter if you're a solo woman, a solo person, you're always on your guard. So, like, I'm a woman. I have two cats. I'm not very ferocious. I've got weapons in my vehicle. But, like, that was super creepy what happened earlier. So, like, chances are I'm going to move. <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah, definitely. Van life. <laughs> and it's funny because I'm sure your your senses are even more aware now of, of people being around. I had... Uh, I started out in San Francisco 
and you know the homeless population is always talked about in san francisco mm-hmm. so commonly like you just have people on your car touching your car yelling outside your car and i learned very quickly that protection was a really important part of this lifestyle and i'm sure mm-hmm. in your case um it's a huge part i think it's difficult because i just had a friend a couple days ago um, and my guard was down. Like I've been in caravans for uh, the last couple of months. And so my guard mm. was definitely down because I'm, I'm solo right now. And when my guard was taken down, I, I was, I was reminded that anything could happen. So my friend was at a hot springs in Arizona a couple days ago. And, um, she said that, you know, a very nice, kind, um, man approached her. They had a really great conversation. Well, it turns out, he wasn't so kind after all and followed her for the next two hours. She ended up getting police involved. Um, and she ended up feeling, and she's been on the road. Oh, hi, this is Atlas. He's deciding that he's going to just like come right through. Um, and so what happened with her is she felt so unsafe after four years on the road. This was the first time that it ever happened to her, but she parked her vehicle somewhere and then flew home just for a couple weeks because she's mm-hmm. too nervous that this person was still in the area. So that's just something that you have to think about when you're living on the road. Now, knock on wood, I have never had a crazy scenario. Have there been moments where I've been very creeped out and I just leave? Absolutely. But you, it's, it's kind of like when you ride a motorcycle, it's not if you fall, it's when. <laughs> so you just mm-hmm. have to be on your guard at all times which is exhausting you definitely need a break from it but you start to get used to it um but that's the interesting thing about solo van life that i sometimes envy with people in van life with partners is you are doing everything by yourself so you are taking care of the pets you are feeding the pets you're figuring out where to park if that play if you get knocked on by the police which i did a couple weeks ago for the first time when i was in steamboat snowboarding like you have to move to a new place. You have to cook your own dinner. You have to clean up after yourself. Like, I know that sounds so, like, small and easy, but when you're in a moving vehicle, it's like, oh, no. By the end of the day, you're exhausted. Right, <laughs> so, right. Which, like, you know you had to do that. <laughs> yeah, I did. And honestly, um, I didn't really have a lot of situations where I felt threatened personally. Um, okay. I don't know if that was more my outlook towards the world or that I've been in a lot of those kind of situations. But one thing that felt good, I had maybe one story. I was deep in the bush and some guy, it was hot, like San Jacinto mountains, like 90 degrees and a really sweaty man with ski goggles on. I'm not kidding. Like Oakley or like old ski goggles on (laughs) comes sprinting at us just like full charge sprinting and then goes right past our pan and Willow was just on him like a hawk. And the guy did not, he did not come back. And I was like, okay, I didn't think Willow like had a dinner, but like when that moment happened, she like flipped a switch and was like, I'm, you're not coming over here. And that's sometimes what I, I, I have two cats. I'm not getting a dog, but I, it would be nice to have a dog for that reason. Um, Mm. But I can tell you some of the different ways that, like, I do protect myself. I'm not going to tell you all the ways because, like, whoever listening, if you're a creeper trying to stalk me, <laughs> but, like, I'm not telling you all the ways. Um, one of the biggest things is have a bat and take a bat and put a sock over the bat. If you end up being in a position where you have to swing at someone, um, the person who you're swinging at will grab the sock, then you can swing again. Um, If you don't have a sock on the bat, then they can just kind of grab the bat. So the sock is like an extra layer of protection. Um, This is a huge shout out to my grandpa. And technically for legal reasons, this is a joke legal reasons this is a joke but um wasp spray if you have a bad wasp problem instead of using pepper spray or bear spray to get rid of your wasp problem um the wasp spray sprays 16 to 20 feet and if the wasps get the spray in their eyes then um they have to it has to be removed at a hospital so that's another really great thing is um the wasp isn't going to be in your van. You can shoot the wasp from outside of your van and it could still potentially um, help you. So wasp spray is a huge, huge, huge um, tool trick, but you can't say that you use wasp spray for anything but wasps, just letting you know. Um, And then there's the obvious, you know, tasers telling, like I text my parents almost every night where I am. Um, Whether I'm in a caravan, whether I'm not, my friends have all my locations. My family has my location. Um, I have a Garmin in-reach satellite phone. So when I'm in situations where I don't have service, amazing. Like, that Garmin makes me feel so safe. Um, Or the Garmin, like, say I am in a situation where um, 
someone is uh, potentially coming into the van, I can press the SOS button and they know my exact GPS coordinates. Um, mm -hmm. So that is an incredible, just like breath of fresh air that I have just in case something were to happen. Um, there's tons of other ways too. Like I know that there's like some bracelets that you can get that like if you're in harm's way, you like tap it three times and then it goes out to the GPS signal. Um, there's a lot of different things that my friends do. Or the really great thing is like, I used to live in the city of Chicago. I would have the same routine every single day and I would walk home to my apartment and I felt very unsafe having the same routine. If you're in a situation where like it's very strange um, and you, you feel something's off, all you do is leave. So making sure that like you don't really have anything girly in your cab, um, which my cab is a mess right now, but like you don't have anything girly in there. You don't have anything um, blocking your seat because in case you do have to like make a run for it, you want your seat completely cleared. And then every time you back or every time you go to a, a campsite, like you want to back into it specifically so that you can one leave immediately, but then also so that you can um, make sure like the surrounding area, there's no cars that could block you in. So that's what I really look for in a campsite is I try not to pick one that's like too condensed. I try to pick one, one huge open space. So in case anything were to happen, my four wheel drive vehicle could get the fuck out. So those are, those are some of the tactics that I use. Hell yeah. I feel like you could write a book on that. I like would just park anywhere and not think about it. So I'm learning so much from you right so, now. And that's the interesting thing is like a lot of my guy friends and I hate to throw a gender into it, but a lot of my guy friends sleep with their doors open I, and they'll like little, they'll have like a crack open or a window open. And I'm sitting over here being like, okay, I have to put my weapons out before my bed. Like, like when I am like chilling at a campsite and the cats are out, I have weapons on um, a counter at all times. You never know who's going to come up to your van. Like there was one time I was in Colorado. Someone did come up to my van and I physically screamed at the top of my lungs. Now they were women and they were just checking out the campsite, but I still screamed at the very top of my lungs and probably almost tased them. Um, but you just also have to be cognizant too of, I get a lot of comments. I get a lot of DMS. I get a lot of people who are at grocery stores that see me entering my van and they're, they're very harmless comments. Mm -hmm. But a man will walk up to me and be like, hey, darling, like, are you traveling alone? Are those your cats? And while they may be, I try to put it in the perspective of like my dad would say that, you know what I'm saying? But he doesn't know. I'm going to lie. I'm going to tell them, no, my husband's in the van. Or when I go to get gas and I'm at a gas station, like my friend Cole told me this. And when I'm at a gas station, if I'm alone or I'm on a trail alone, I'll shout, hey, babe, do you want anything from the store? Do you want me to get you anything? And then I close my door so that people think that there's someone inside of this vehicle. Um, so okay, I see a couple questions as to a reason why you don't own a gun. I will not personally share if I own a gun or if I do not own a gun. Um, so I'm not saying I do and I'm not saying that I don't. But uh, that's just to answer that question. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Um, well, that was like, I feel like I learned more than I did an entire year of living on the road right there. My thing is like, I'm usually just like, get to somewhere and then end up sleeping outside just like on the ground and i don't it sounds like that is not really good safety i'm over here being like what was that noise okay there's a noise here okay great okay cool <laughs> yeah uh god i could probably be uh better at the safety thing because i know you know everyone's susceptible to to things like that so let me uh backtrack just slightly yeah. um you decide van life is for me i'm van life quinn now um, you buy the vehicle. Was the vehicle already built out or did you have to do that process? So I bought an empty cargo van. Um, hmm. So I bought the empty cargo van and I, I wanted van life and I wanted it now. And I didn't necessarily scout um, as many builders as I could. I knew very... It's funny because like I, I did a recent video on just like the things not to do in van life and it was kind of a satire video about all like the fuck ups I've done, which are a lot, but you don't truly know what you're getting into until you do it. I'm just going to say that you don't, you are not prepared for any of this. And when I bought my empty cargo van, I gave it to builders without knowing what I wanted, without knowing who they were, um, without knowing their craftsmanship. I just kind of was like, take it. I don't think, you know, anything of it, like here, take, take the van, take the van. Um, and what I've learned while being in the van is, and seeing everyone else's van, cause I hadn't even seen another van, like not one van. I just like knew that I wanted to do this and I went a thousand percent into it. Um, so there are definitely things about this van, which, um, 
I, I highly recommend renting a van before you, you decide what you want, just so that you can understand, okay, do I want to be able to stand in my van? Do I want um, the kitchen on this side? Do I want this on here? Where do I want my windows? Um, it's really, really, really important uh, to, I think, ahead of time before you do a build out of a van to understand truly what you want, because I would, I would completely redo this, which is why I'm looking for another Ford Transit. <laughs> so that I can potentially redo it. But I had builders build this out. Um, not to say that I wouldn't build out a new one, but they had those skills and I wanted, you know, a van now. <laughs> but definitely uh, do all your research because um, there's a lot of builders out there now. Yeah, I, it sounds crazy, but I can totally relate to the I want it now. And that's mm -hmm. like my, my first rig was prefabbed because it was a truck camper and then i just like made the modifications i wanted but i bought it and i moved out of my san francisco apartment that night into okay. the van like i was just that's like how I, you have I, to do it you literally it if, now if you take a moment to pause you will not do it like it, it, the minute that you pause so like i always like to say like your stars are never going to align they're never going to align. If you're continuing to wait for your stars to align, it's not going to happen and you're going to be waiting forever. So that's like my biggest thing is like you and I are both on the same wavelength and so many of my other friends in the van life community, all same story. It's like, nope, do it, do it, do it, do it. There's a couple questions um, that I've actually never talked about that are coming in that are how much is your build um, and how much was the van. And all of that has changed significantly. So I bought my van November of 2020. Yeah. 2020 yeah and now these prices are you can do these prices for higher you can do these prices for lower you can do these prices for significantly lower like my friends um gene and shay they did theirs for seven thousand dollars and that is the most beautiful van i have ever like i'm obsessed with their van if you haven't checked them out definitely check out gene and shay um so they did their full build for eight seven thousand dollars now personally and some people don't like me talking about money this is just like it's like a down payment on a house um i my msrp for the ford transit was around forty thousand. um now that was a year ago now they're like sixty thousand for a used vehicle it's crazy money if you want a medium roof or a low roof they're significantly cheaper i'm just i'm five nine so anyone five eight and below can fit into a medium roof ford transit um and they're so much cheaper and there's a, there's enough of them um and then the build so like you're looking at like forty thousand, but mine was a brand new vehicle i wanted the all-wheel drive i had the savings for it because i was working corporate for eight years for a magazine so i had the savings rented my whole life um so i had the savings and all you need to do is put a down payment and then you you know finance it so um then the builds so builds are really particular so you will have your labor costs and then you'll have your cost of what's inside of the vehicle um if you want more solar it's and more electric it's going to cost more do you want heated floors it's going to cost more if you want bare bones it's maybe not going to cost as much so starting builds range anywhere between twenty thousand and they go all the way up to a hundred and twenty thousand if not more and that's just dependent upon what you want and who you go to um if you're interested in getting a van now you could go to vantrader.com and there's already pre-built ones on there. I just, I know that I will always need to custom build mine because of the cats. Um, so like if you have pets, one of the ways that I, is it okay that I ramble? I'm just like rambling. I'm a talker. Oh. <laughs> if you oh. follow me. I'm you... <laughs> learning. I'm learning. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cause I'm just like, everyone asks me if I speed up my, my TikTok and my Instagram videos. And I'm like, I do not speed them up. <laughs> oh, I totally <laughs> thought those were sped up. No, that is how I talk. Um, anyway, anyway, okay. So, um, so for example, so I need a custom van. I can't just have like a normal one that people build out that I would purchase because of the cats. If you have pets and you want to talk about like weather control, because I'm snowboarding in the winter, so it's super cold. And then in the summer, I, I try to keep it below 85 degrees. Um, so what I have that is specifically built out for the cats to, to, moderate the temperature is one it's fully insulated um so making sure that like you know all of the heat or all of you know the cool is going to stay in the other thing is having at least two points of air circulation so for example i've got four so i've got two fans which do not get the fantastic fan get the max air fan the fantastic fan sucks <laughs> don't Wait, do it which is the two-way one that blows in and out 
Um, they both are the two way one, but the Max Air is covered for rain, and the Fantastic one is it. And my Fantastic one is like broken. It's so bad. It lasted a year. Oh, no. Um, I've got a cover on it. You gotta lift the cover up and then turn it on. Yep, that was, that's fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that one also. I it did like pretty, it. Uh, it's just really bad. So I have four areas of circulation in my van. So I've got two windows. I've got a sliding window on my rear view um, windows, and then I've got a T vent window here. So like this is my window. These are my window covers. Um, so when these, um, so for example, when the fans are blowing. Um, out they're sucking air from the other areas and it's creating this like massive wind tunnel so whenever someone's like whoa aren't your cats hot in there no because there's a huge wind tunnel of air it's almost like i have air conditioning in the van um i also have and i'll show it to you now i have a pocket door sorry it's like oh wait so <laughs> i tried to clean it as best i can so hi this is my, this is my van so i have this pocket door and this like Okay, sorry, this is hard. So this, like, opens and closes. Okay. And this also allows um, for all of the insulation and the heat and the cool to stay in. So I love the pocket door because I can, so it's like, say I have friends outside. We're doing, like, game night. The door is open. It's nighttime. I'll put the cats in the front seat, and I'll close the door, and then I'll lock the door, and then they're in there for a little bit. And then I have, like, this main cab area, and then they're not, like, roaming around everywhere. So I highly recommend if you have cats to get that sliding door. Yeah, right on. It turns you get your big spacious living room. Yeah. No, no cats wandering around. Yeah, I know, and they're just like they'll sleep anyway. Like they're sleeping right now in the bed. Yeah. yeah. It it is funny the the perception <laughs> like people are always worried about your your animals. Um, I mean, for any I amount of time. So many comments of like this is animal cruelty, animal abuse, and I'm like, sir, I. My cats go outside more than the average American. <laughs> like, trust me, they're fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> the internet's a weird place, man. It's a really weird place. It is a weird place. <laughs> Lots of weird DMs recently. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that you get plenty of them, especially, I don't know, I feel like it's different for girls. Like, girls just have mm -hmm. to deal with a whole different host of problems that guys don't have to deal with. Yeah, like you sleeping outside and not realizing that someone could come in <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah, I, sure they could. Um, <laughs> or like, I don't share my location. Everything is always like three days behind on my stories. Um, so while I'm in Utah and while my stories are, you know, saying that I'm here, I'm probably, I'm long gone. Um, so like, I'm about to post some Sedona stories of like where I was staying in Sedona, but like I was, you know, long gone from there. And that's just like a safety thing that I've always done, no matter, you know, followers and no followers. Okay, Atlas, cool. <laughs> i think that's also kind of cool because then you don't have to like you can like do a little bit more experiencing because I, part of the thing that i've even talked about it on here before is for me i either do camera trips or i do no camera trips or like no electronic trips and i kind of like i try to make a decision beforehand lately it's pretty much been all no electronic trips but yeah when i'm feeling inspired like i want to make something then i'll bring a camera and I kind of have to di differentiate, like, if it's one of those trips or if it's one of these trips. Because if not, it's just, like, being sucked into the electronics the whole time instead of experiencing the full breadth of what's around you. You know, and that's something that is interesting. Um, and being in the adventure photography, videography side, like, I'm very amateur photography um, but still, like, I hang out with a lot of those photographers. Like, I do find myself struggling to put the electronics down. Um, definitely. Uh, that is, that is, uh, it's, I'm, I'm trying to limit my screen time. <laughs> definitely trying. But it's really, really difficult, to be honest. Especially because, like, I love creating videos and I love making videos. So that does inspire me. Um, I see a quick question on how do I earn money. So just to give you guys a little bit of backstory, um, uh, for those who just jumped on. Um, so I was a corporate, uh, I was in the corporate life for eight years. I did event production. So I produced events in the United States and the UK. And then I was a marketing director for a magazine. And so when I left to do van life, I started my own marketing company in which um, marketing agencies paid me for photography, videography, advertising, um, voiceovers, video, like a ton, whitelisting, licensing. And so I have all of that experience from 
my uh, marketing days. So like a lot of my photographer friends or van life friends who are super new to the social media game, they'll ask me to take a peek at their contract or like take a peek at their, hey, Quinn, am I getting paid enough for this? Or like, Quinn, what's a licensing or what, what do the words in perpetuity mean um, if I'm a new content creator? And so I'm like, okay, well, in perpetuity means they can have your content for the rest of your, your life and there's nothing you can do. So don't do that. That's a big no. So how I make money now is a couple different ways. So I've got a ton of affiliate links. Um, so anytime, you know, maybe I'm, you buy my cat backpack that I have on my Amazon link, that's like 2%, but still like that's like groceries for the month, which is really nice. Um, and then you've got the marketing side of it. And then I also do investments as well. So um, I have a lot in the stock market. Um, which is really awesome. So those are my three main ways. And then I'll start. So hopefully my website will launch in the next month. And then um, I'll have some different like e-com ebooks and stuff like that. So hopefully I'm hoping for four like streams of income. Um, but a lot of questions are like, how do I live this way? How do you afford it? Um, why does my cat keep coming in the camera? <laughs> and um, so how people afford it is is one of the biggest questions and one of the biggest misconceptions of van life. When I was in Chicago, just to like lay it down, when I was in Chicago, I was paying um, $18,000 a year in rent. That's a lot of money in rent. And when I was about to move to Los Angeles right before um, the pandemic, I was about to spend $24,000 on rent. $24,000 which is a van. So when a lot of people ask me, how do you afford van life? I look at them and I'm like, how do you afford your rent anywhere? Because rent in Chicago is skyrocketing rent in, in California, everywhere is skyrocketing. So that's what I have to tell people is like, you know, the perspective of it is, well, technically my rent now is gas. I still pay insurance. Like insurance is my highest expense. Um, it's crazy crazy dollars for insurance um and that's health insurance then it's you know you've got your vehicle insurance you have your car payment and then whatever else you want groceries cat stuff um i don't spend money on camping um and then gas so those are my main expenses so when i did all of the math um it came out to significantly lower than just what my rent was in chicago so i think the tables need to be turned a little bit on the perspective of um money because this is a far cheaper lifestyle than city living um mm -hmm. which i was previously doing now suburb housing in the country i don't know that because i i haven't done that so i don't know those prices um but that is and so so some of my friends they work their nine to five so most of my friends who work nine to five are in software so if you want to do van life get a software job they work they make a shit ton of money and they really don't work a lot through nine to five. <laughs> so you just have to find internet because internet's kind of a bitch to find um, in these like remote areas. Uh, I have a friend that's a woodworker. I have friends that are accountants. Um, I have friends that are, um, they don't have, they're just living off savings and they're only spending $500 a month. So it's really up to you. Like I'll do an, uh, a video. If you guys follow me, I'll do a video. There's like 16 other ways of my friends. I like put it up all together. I'll like release it soon, but there's so many ways. Like people are online teachers. Um, van life is cheaper than your rent. Uh, yeah. and so I think that's like a very big misconception of like afford to travel. And I'm like, okay, literally like, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm sleeping here for free. <laughs> Yeah, and I think um, a lot of people... Oh, yeah, my friends are chefs. Van. Sorry, Jonathan just jumped on, and he's a chef. Sorry, he's a chef in Chicago yeah. building out his van right now, living in Chicago. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> I'm, like, reading these comments. I think a lot of people don't understand the, the park for free concept, um, the fact that you can use Campendium and things like that to stay on BLM land. I, I mean, typically, if you're in Texas, I don't know if you've been in Texas, West Texas, beautiful place to do van life. 95% of the land is privately owned. So I will warn you, if you make your way down to West Texas, brutal. But just about like anywhere else in the West, Colorado, Utah, there's all these places with public land, and it's free to yep. park. Utah, Idaho, mm. and Colorado have some of my favorite spots for free land oh my god both cats right now are in the the cat teepee it's or the cat <laughs> igloo it's so funny this it's because my heater's not on so it's a little cold in here 
<laughs> if, gotcha. if, I, if I turn my heater on, it would make this crazy noise. So I'm not going to do that to you guys. Um, but yeah, the apps that I use to find free land are Camp NDM, which also shows you if the land has service, um, which I use an AT&T router for service as well as my AT&T service, which is a huge mistake. Make sure if you're going to get a hotspot, get it different than your phone carrier. So yeah. I have an AT&T phone carrier. And then in about a month, I'll be getting a Verizon like Jetpack. Um, that was my biggest Verizon mistake. Jetpack, Verizon phone. Huge That's mistake. Huge, huge mistake. mistake. You want two services because Stanley, Idaho, like my favorite place in the world. Um, one of them, um, doesn't have any AT&T service, so I was shit out of luck. <laughs> First of all, Stanley, Idaho sucks. No one go there. Oh, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Place sucks. It's oh. trash. Don't go there. But there is so much national land there. The mountains, the sawtooths are insane. The water's crystal clear. There's hot tubs made of the earth everywhere, but it yep. sucks. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Aspen goes there in like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I um, love that spot. Oh, it's the best. And then I saw a couple questions about how I get mail and how I do taxes. Um, so mail, I get three different ways. And man, I need to make all these videos on, online. So mail, I get three different ways. Um, way number one is I get it sent to friends and family's houses. Um, way number two is you do Amazon lockers. That's really nice. And then way number three is something that I didn't know until I started doing van life. And this is a way that a lot of backpackers who hike like the AT um, or the PCT. Um, and what you do is it's called general delivery. Um, so you will want to find the area in which you are going. So I did a uh, general delivery in, <laughs> I did general delivery in Bend, Oregon. You look up what the address is. You write Quinn Gable, general delivery and then the address that it tells you to do online and they will hold it for up to 15 to 30 days you just go you hand them your license and you're like hey general delivery for Quinn Gable and then they'll give you your package it works 90% of the time um, other times it's you know who knows where your package is yeah I the first time I actually heard about that general delivery my friend Matt came on the show he's a survivalist and a crazy like ultra runner and he was doing the PCT. He actually, mm -hmm. he would have broke the known world record, but he stopped right in front of it because he was like, Whoa. I don't want to do this for the wrong reasons and like caught a bus and went back. But he sent like a pack of power bars and literally ran across California in like a couple days. And, uh, and that was, that was like all he had at that point. Cause he was like a poor young kid. He got mm -hmm. like a, early sponsorship from power bars and he just like ran to the post office hundreds of miles away so he could pick up his power bars it's funny yeah um it's interesting that you say for the wrong reasons because there's so many people online or so many people when i tell them i live in a van they're like oh to clout chase and i'm like i'm sorry this when you if you're a clout chaser in van life you will not last one week that's facts. No, that is a fact. You will not last. I mean, sorry for the TMI, but you're pooping in bags. You're figuring out, going to gas stations to go to, like, showering at truck stops. Like, if you're only doing this for clout, it's, you're, you're really not lasting weeks, which is why you need to test it. Um, mm. So, uh, I'm actually, so, sneak peek. So, I just hit 100K on Instagram, which I'm so pumped about. Where, so, outdoorsy.com, who is, and this isn't, like, sponsored. It's just, I love Outdoorsy. They're a van rental company. They're going to be giving a $1,500 credit um, as a giveaway. So, the giveaway is going to start Sunday on my page. So, make sure to keep an eye out for that. And then you could rent a van for free. Um, wow, and try so so sick. Yeah, so that's super. I'm really, really excited. Um, so I'm really pumped for that. Like super With the pumped. outdoorsy thing, I will give a word of caution. Um, I was, I took Lady May, me and my friend, we went to Joshua Tree. Sick climbing trip, having a great time. I'm like stoked after this climb. Just like, you know when you come back like really happy and you just like talk to random strangers a little bit because you're just like really feeling yourself? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there was an English couple and I was like, hey, like, how are you? And they were like, we are good, but our van sucks. And I'm like, mm. oh, well, why would you make a terrible van? They're like, we just rented it on Outdoorsy. Look at the bathroom door. And it was like a piece of plywood. Everything was falling off the doors. So they're like, because they had heard so many great things about Outdoorsy, because they came from the UK. They wanted to do van life for a month. And this was the best way to do it. Sounds like a great solution. The thing I is, you got to look. That's like a... That's like a uh, it, it, 
it's like getting a bad hotel room. You know what I'm it's saying? Exactly. Like you gotta do your research. But exactly. I think Outdoorsy is an awesome company if you want to um, do van life and you're just not sure yet. Um, I was positive. I was positive that I wanted to do van life, um, which is why I didn't spend the money to do um, Outdoorsy.com. But now I wish that I would have because I would make this van so much different. Like right now I'm sitting on a bench and this is like on my kitchen, but I would flip everything around. Like this is totally not set up to like how I would want it. And so I saw a couple questions ahead of time of like things that you would fix about your van build and things you love about your van build fixed bed people you need a fixed bed don't don't fuck around with those dinettes that you see on instagram that you're like putting together if you really want a dinette okay get a, get a dinette but the fixed bed is like the best thing ever if you follow this van life meme account it's called like van life memes or memes of van life everyone makes fun of all, all the time how every youtube video that has a dinette if someone's like do you use your dinette they're like no, we don't. We, we just like use a fixed bed the entire time. So it's fit. My fixed bed is for sure. My favorite part of my van. I love it so much. Um, but I wish I had a desk area. I have like no desk area in my van and like being a digital nomad, I guess of sorts. And like being a content creator, like I don't really have a great space, um, to work. So I'm finding coffee shops all the time. I'm not really working in my van. Like, so, um, yeah, there's, there's that. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of like wasted space in here. I think that there's just like a ton of different um, areas that I could have just done better, uh, if that makes sense. And then the thing, yeah, so those are, <laughs> and then the lit, oh, I really like where the litter box is. It's like an enclosed, enclosed space. So like, I'm like sitting on the litter box right here. That's where, that's where the bad boy is. <laughs> oh, they climb under there, like through a hole? Um, or there's like a little hole right here. If you can oh, see. Oh, okay, it. I see. Yeah. yeah. So there's like a little hole right there. Um, and it is what it is. Does my van smell sometimes? You know what? Sometimes it does. But do I make sure that it doesn't? Yes. <laughs> um, but that's living on the road, baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how you know you're not a cloud chaser because you're like staying in the same place as a litter box. You got to deal with the bathroom. There's, there's a lot of things that you can, that would definitely weed people out of the van life very quickly. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think, of, oh, and then taxes, um, because you can't really use a PO box. So I use a family members. Um, I'm kind of like, I just say I'm based in Colorado and then I, I use a family member's address or you can use a friend's address, but like my license physically states like my family member's address of like where I technically live. Um, so that's another one too. I think I lived there for a night. You did. <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny because like, I haven't met you yet you've met my dad and hung out and like worked on his peach farm. <laughs> yeah, your dad's a homie. I mean, without And then him. you saved and then you saved a person on a trail. That was like you were meant to save this person. Yeah, it was crazy. For context people that haven't heard that story, um I think my sister and I put a video up, but mm -hmm. I my truck broke down. Um which is a part of van life or, or nomadic lifestyle. Yep. I went to Quinn's dad's house because I knew he was nearby and sold peaches. We wanted peaches. And so we went to get peaches. He convinced us to work on his farm because he needed help. So we had a couple hours to kill until it was time to pick the peaches. I went running in these canyons. I found some dude down in a canyon, 111 degree day. He's on the verge of death. And I end up running six laps on this trail uh, getting him water and we eventually get him out and he survived and then I went and picked peaches the next day So it was a crazy crazy story. It was meant to be it was really I mean, oh, thank God you were there Yeah, it's a it's a weird thing like without the car breaking down. I wouldn't have been mm -hmm. there and who knows who knows yeah. how that one You know that yep. story might, might have been rewritten Yeah, so. totally um, speaking of working on the farm another way that people can make money. And this is another uh, way that my friends, Jean and Shay do it is they do something called, I think it's called Insta jobs or Insta, Insta work, Insta jobs, but they get like remote work. Um, and it's all like on apps. It's like the handy app, but like for a little bit longer period of just like one task. So I think that's a really good idea too. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of people doing like semi migrant working, you know, like mm -hmm. driving someplace where crop is really hot. You know, there might be a place you wanted to hike and there's also a crop that needs 
people need pick pickers or you know peach pickers whatever it is mm -hmm. um i'm sure if like a bunch of van lifers showed up at your dad's house during like peach picking season he would have been like super stoked so there's always people that need help sorry i'm just like really laughing at my cats in their igloo right now <laughs> 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 i'm like counting down until i can turn on my heater <laughs> Is it is it like super loud or something? Is that the? It is super loud, and then it's it's funny because I was having like a game night in here. Oh, that's another thing that I would fix about my van is I don't have like spaces for people to hang out, um, except my bed. So like whenever people hang out, like I love the like playing cards. Um, oh hey Taylor, um, when I love playing cards. Oh let's see the igloo. Okay, they're both in it. Like I don't know what Otto's doing, but they're both in this igloo. <laughs> that's the igloo um but uh so like when i'm playing cards everyone's on my bed so like i've had like four or five people on my bed and we're all playing cards but we were playing one night and all of a sudden my friend's like there's a huge rave outside and i was like what do you mean and she's like i just hear like an unce, unce, unce. and i was like oh that's my heater <laughs> because every time it pulls gasoline so i have a gasoline heater that connects to my gas tank it pulls in but there's a pump so like the pump is like boom <laughs> so when i'm in this like stealth camping because i'm well right now i tore my mcl a couple weeks ago snowboarding but like it's 90 percent better so when i go back on the mountain it's so difficult to stealth camp in the mountain towns because your heaters are so loud um so that's the only interesting thing that i will be figuring out because this is my first winter on the road in winter locations um where like a lot of my friends right now are in like arizona joshua tree california um san diego some of them are going to baja so that's super cool but we'll see it all depends on the knee <laughs> yeah for sure i i remember so mine was a 93 camper and i had to retrofit it for the winter so i had to like replace the plumbing which was i had never done plumbing um mm -hmm. you know i don't know anything about plumbing so that was kind of a, a disaster at first but there's always those like little things i feel like in nomadic life that feel like they're the end of the world and then like a week later it's not really that big of a deal anymore um completely oh my god i just hit myself in the face so one of my friends um i think his handle is coal in a van so right now he was going to go to Park City and he's like super resilient. He's got a Japanese vehicle that was shipped over um, and it's a cool, cool, cool vehicle. Um, but everything goes wrong in this vehicle and every other day he is having to fix it. So he's in Idaho right now fixing it because something is going wrong and he was like all bundled up, um, literally trying to go to... Um, trying to go to Idaho and he's like bundled up because he doesn't want to smell coolant. So like you're when you're on the road all shit is going to happen. Like every single, like every week, something is going to happen. Um, like it's just, it just is. <laughs> yeah. I remember when my heater broke, I was living like half in a cave and half in the van. And then like my cave, it had a little fireplace in it. So I could get it like really heated up and like nice. And, and so my heater breaks and just starts spewing propane in the van so i'm like screw the van i'm i'm not doing the van right now the van needs to get fixed i'm staying in the cave it's warm in here it's cozy so it was... it's so true it's i also have in case my heater goes out um which has happened plenty of times before i also have a um a, a mr buddy um mm. so that's in my garage area just in case my van decides like it doesn't want to have a heater today <laughs> yeah those are super they are cause... finicky <laughs> If you fall, if they fall, they turn off, right? The Mr. Buddies. Is, yeah. is that the same one? Yeah. yeah. And like, I haven't used the Mr. Buddy yet because I have cats and I'm like, I don't, that is my, like, that is my last resort. If something happens, um, is, is turning on the Mr. Buddy just because like with the cats, I don't want them to like, you know, burn. <laughs> yeah. They start Sorry messing. for that visual. <laughs> like pawing it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, do you, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say, you, you mentioned, I think your name's Sydney uh, from mm -hmm. Divine on the Road. You were saying that was like yeah. your inspiration in the beginning. I'm curious, like right now, when you think about it, who is inspiring you right now? Mm, what a good question. My, my friends, Jean and Shay, 
they're a huge inspiration. Um, they talk a lot about, so they just did an amazing post on genderless bathrooms um, and all-inclusive bathrooms. And I think that's really important for someone living on the road because there are um, all walks of life living on the road is, you know, when you go to Planet Fitness and I'll tell, so showers, I'll do Planet Fitness. I have a membership. I do, um, I have an outdoor shower, but I've only used it like two or three times. I don't really think that it's worth it. Um, to have a shower in your van and then I'll also like lakes and stuff like that or like truck stops um but Jean and Shay did a great article on one um queer friendly cities so I think that that was a very amazing article because they've been to so many so that's on Sydney's website right now and then they just did a great article about um genderless bathrooms and where to go to feel comfortable so I think um their account is really inspirational. I think if you're also interested in like more awesome cat content, fast fam van, they have a cat, Vic Chungus. Um, she makes incredible content and she like turns this content out. Um, I think I'm trying to think that's actually a really, really, really great question. Um, because there are so many people that inspire me or like the photographers that I hang out with. Oh, an account that like I absolutely love. And I think is a really eye opening account art is glow graphics. Um, glow graphics is a very, so she is um, a black writer, travel enthusiast. And she talks a lot about um, where she feels safe traveling. And she like glow graphics is one of my favorite Insta Instagram accounts. Um, she breaks down truly just, it's amazing. Like, I just think it's, it's a really great educational content, uh, source of education. And then I also really like the photographer wild Gina. Um, she's a black photographer based out of Arizona, I think. Um, and her content is spectacular and just a lot of learning lessons. Um, so definitely those accounts, I think, that provide education of something that you might not know. Like, I love the accounts that are beautiful images. I love the accounts that want to make you go outside. But, like, the accounts truly inspiring me are the accounts that um, in educate. Like, I am just so pro-education on these social media platforms. People say all you want about social media. The more you educate on these, these platforms the more you're helping people um, and inspiring people to believe that they can also do what you do. Um, and I think that's, that's a really, really beautiful thing. So those, that's, yeah, that's my, <laughs> that was that's a tough a one. Point. That really no. got me on the spot. You should have warned me about that question. I would have prepared. <laughs> no, no cheating, no cheating. Um, it, the education thing's a good point because I, you know, I'm not like a big social media person, but I'm, I'm getting there, you know, I'm, I'm learning about it. And uh, I like to think of, like what I put out there to be mostly educational mine's more in like the outdoor skills realm and I'm curious when you were coming from Chicago mm -hmm. I can't imagine that you had like a ton of outdoor skills to like hand out so I'm curious like was there a big learning curve in terms of like okay this is what I do if I'm hiking in the snow this is how I make a fire in the rain like did you have to learn um you know, on trail first aid, were there things, because I feel like now you spend 10x the amount of time outside that maybe you would have if you were in Chicago. Yep. Um, that's a really good question. So I was really, really, really privileged growing up to have two parents who taught me a lot of that. So we did go camping in the Midwest. Um, my dad did teach me, you know, how to snowboard, ski. Um, my family did travel. So I was incredibly privileged in that way. Now, I think the skills that I didn't know were how to find parking. So using apps like iOverlander and just find, like I had no idea that there was public land in the United States that you could sleep on. Zero clue. Um, I had no idea that, you know, um, you uh, even like the national parks, go sleep in the national parks or like where to get water. Like you can get free water all over the place. Um, there, there are dump stations that there are, it's just the, I think the biggest wake up call was fending for yourself in all aspects of your life. So you're starting the fire by yourself. You're cooking your, your dinner by yourself, things that you would do in an apartment, but you're doing it on, in an area that like maybe isn't safe or like, or it's in the middle of nowhere. You've never been there before. Like you're really using like downloading Google maps. Like what do I do when I'm not in service? What, what do I need to prepare for when I'm not in service? Like, I know that doesn't answer your, like, I feel like you know so many more outdoor skills than I do. Um, like, 
when you talked about building, you know, a fire or, or building weapons outside out of nothing or, or something like that. So like, I still think I don't know a ton about that. Um, but I think it's like the safety, the finding free parking, the stealth camping, finding friends. That's a huge one. How do you find friends and how do you date on the road? Um, that is a huge one that like, how okay so like i'm learning how to live an unstructured life like i was very type a i had my schedule i was on a plane every single week um traveling for work like i was super type a when you're in a van life like all hell breaks loose you cannot be type a anymore and so there, there's no structure you have to be okay with having no structure so like friends how do you find friends so like i didn't have any friends for the first three months um and so how I found friends was, and I'm also like an extroverted introvert, if that makes sense. I get energy by being alone, hence why I live in a van alone. But I, I do love talking to people. I love being on camera. So when I started Googling van festivals, because there are such things as van festivals, if you didn't know that, um, one had come up called Van Fest in Utah. And that was around, like, I think May. And it was so incredible because you went to this van festival. You could see all these vans that everyone wanted to um, tour and see. You could see school buses. And then you could also see the solo women. So, like, my friend Steph was, um, her name is Steph Gray. She lives in a bus. She was the first solo woman that I met on the road. So, I thought that I was going to meet a lot more people when I did van life. And I did not meet a single soul except retired couples um, for three months. So, I had no friends for three months, totally solo. So, when I went to this festival, I, like, sought out these, like, solo females. So I was like, oh, you live in a bus alone? I live in a transit alone. We're best friends. So, I extroverted so hard and from that you just start meeting other people and so like I think my friend Erica just jumped on hi Erica I miss you um and my cat actually went underneath her van at van fest so I was like getting my cat underneath her van and then her van looked so cool and I was like sorry that like my cat is underneath your van and she's like that's okay and I'm like can I please see your your van and now we're like such good friends we caravan for like a month and a half together and i like miss her so much so it's cool the different ways that you can meet friends but how then it worked after that was everyone then um everyone then goes to different caravan groups and so you kind of just pick one so i was like steph what are you doing she's like okay i'm gonna go to this caravan so i'm like okay so then you kind of follow all these other strangers who live in vans and buses and um priuses and minivans and you go to a location and then it ended up being like the greatest caravan of all time there were 30 strangers there i had no idea except who one person was and then you start getting to meet people and the cool thing about van life is like you're all doing van life for a reason you're all either running from something or accepting something or understanding more about your life so it's not going to be like cheesy questions like what's your favorite color or where do you want to travel it's i mean i remember my friend dove um we sat down next to each other and then all of a sudden we just opened up like instantly about everything in our life. And I think that's like one of the beautiful things about van life is you're, you skip all of the small talk um, mm. because van life is just like in your soul and it sounds cheesy until you do it. And I swear you're going to sit down next to someone and they're going to open up your entire life story and, and you don't even know what they're doing. Like it's incredible. So then from there, how it worked is I started DMing other people. Um, I started DMing um, friends who I knew those people who I'd already hung out with hung out with. And it was mm -hmm. almost like this web of, okay, you hung out with that person. They were safe. I can hang out with this person. And then they hung out with this person. And then you do that. So the three van festivals that I recommend, well, the two van festivals that I recommend are descend on bend, which is, is five days. It's a paid event. It's about a thousand rigs. It's massive. Um, in the Oregon desert. And that is in like the September area. And then van fest, which is a one day paid event with tons of caravans after. And that is, um, in like the May, June, um but again you can be whoever you want in van life and that's the cool thing is like i've learned so much to be myself i've learned the people that i want to surround myself with i've learned new activities um i mean just a couple days ago i was in a gathering and there were people who were throwing fire there were people who were um vegan making the like most delicious calzones i've ever made and they're teaching people how to do it there are people like today there is a, a huge um gathering in arizona 
um, in spite of another gathering that was supposed to happen, talking about environmentally how to protect the, the um, space that we're on. So you are being opened up to so much culture and new things that you never in a million years, like me living in Chicago, no way. I would never know any of this. I would never meet these people. I would never cross paths with these people. And I'm so grateful for this community. Um, that was a big tangent, but that is how I met friends. <laughs> no, good to know. Because, like, I, I did solo band life really by myself. I didn't really I, – I stopped at places where I had friends, but I didn't have van life friends. So that's a – interesting perspective and one of the things that just popped in my head is like how blessed we are to live in america where we have this shout out teddy roosevelt where we have this amazing public land that's accessible to everybody like regardless of like social status or financial situation like yep. there's not a lot of places on earth that you can have access to places like this people are like oh i want to travel like to this place and that place i'm like no america is sick like, especially the West, I think, like, some of the coolest terrain in the entire planet, and it's all public. That's yep. a pretty unique thing. I mean, I was, like, a couple weeks ago, I was sleeping next to a hoodoo, or, you know, my first night, I slept on a cliff in Utah, and, like, woke up, and it was, like, you know, Gooseneck State Park, and, like, I'm just so grateful for all of this protected land, and that's why it's so important, too, when you get to this land, leave it better than you found it. So leave no trace is in just full effect for van life. Like van lifers are not, they're the cleanest, most um, environmentally friendly people that I've ever met. And that's the really beautiful thing is like, we're not coming here and leaving trash. We're coming to a location, seeing there's trash there, picking it up and then dumping it somewhere else or like dumping it and tra like it, and we're recycling it or doing whatever. Like that's, that's, the awesome thing is everyone in van life wants to see this earth and, and this environment protected. Um, I'm going to see if there's more questions. What questions do you guys have? I'm kind of just like, like ranting everything that I know in my brain. I had like oh. a little list of like, <laughs> no, you've, you've hit a lot of my questions that I didn't ask me. One thing I've like, and this is a question I like to ask a lot of people is like, okay, you've done uh, this amazing um, all these trips and this content creation, but what is next for mm. Quinn? Like, what is something that hasn't started yet that's, like, on the horizon that's, like, the next big thing? Ooh. Like, in terms of location or, like, like, like next big thing? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you decide how, how, okay. how you phrase that. But, I mean, ultimately, I think of it like things that you have in the works, like things cool. that you're making or working on right now. Yeah, so I'm going to be launching my website soon, and so it's uh, it's Quinn there, done that .com. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, nice, yeah, so that'll nice. be cute. Um, so that'll be launching soon. Super, super, super excited about that. Um, and then, uh, so that'll have travel guides on it. It'll have van life um, information. It'll have campsites that I really like on it, and just a general like vlog blog. Um, hoping to come out with my YouTube channel soon. I'm just like kind of. I don't know. I'm lazy on that. Like I, I like short form content, but working on long form content, um, hoping to potentially get some land to maybe like build, um, maybe build a house. Like one of the cool things of why I'm doing van life too, is to figure out the different cities I want to live in. Cause being from the Midwest, I didn't have mountains. I didn't grow up with, um, huge land that, I mean, I, I did, Ch Chicago has plenty of cornfields, but like nothing like a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, so yeah, website, YouTube, potentially buy some land to maybe do some fun projects. Um, I would love to host my own event. I think finding female or not female, but, but women, women friends or, um, uh, all inclusive, but like friends that you can trust in a really safe environment. I would love to put a retreat together. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am hosting a trip to Bali, Indonesia next uh, or this September. So if you're interested in going to Bali, Indonesia, Jonathan's going to be going. I have a couple friends going, a ton of people. So um, 20 people go are going on the first trip, and then this is the, the second trip. Um, you can go to the link in my bio and you'll see it. So that's really exciting if you want to come to Bali, Indonesia. But I definitely want to start hosting some retreats in the United States in like year two or like in year like three of van life. Um, because I think it's really important for people. And this just doesn't even have to be in van life. Like if you wanted to try van life and come and maybe sleep in your car, or sleep in a tent and have a safe space for women around you, I, I'm really excited about potentially hosting that as well. 
Right on. Yeah, I, I saw the stuff about the Bali trip, um, and it looked looked super cool. Especially, I mean, you know, I love surfing, and I was like, oh, that's one of my dreams. I know. To go We're gonna in Bali. surf. We're gonna hike. We're gonna do a ton of cool stuff. And like, what's cool is I've already been to Bali before, so like. I definitely like on our off days, like I, I know what to do. Like, that's like the really cool thing. It's like, I'm excited to like re go back and do it again. Cause like planning trips is one of my like favorite passions. So I have a question. Do you shred? If for what? Like snowboarding? <laughs> I know you shred snowboarding, but I mean surfing particularly. I have surfed one time and you're <laughs> never going to believe. No, I've surfed twice. Once in San Diego, but that was my first time. You're never going to guess the first time where I surfed. <laughs> Uh, I think it's called like oh, Naz it's called like Nazarene in Portugal. <laughs> it's like the one with the crazy like the highest waves in the world. <laughs> what? Um yeah, you so smoked? I did it. What? <laughs> Were you high? You smoked I didn't do oh, those what? waves. I didn't do those waves. I did like the baby waves, but it was I was in Portugal, um, and I was, I just wanted to go to Portugal. Um, so I was, I had some PTO, went to Portugal and then signed up for like an Airbnb experience. And like, that was my first time surfing. I wasn't very good. For people but... that don't know, Nazarene's like top three, I would say top three big waves in the world. Like Jaws, Maverick. I did, but Maverick. I didn't do the big wave. I did the small wave. <laughs> well, that's epic that you at least got to go there. Yeah, it was so sweet. It was sweet. So yeah, my first, my first time was Nazarene in Portugal. And then you've, you've been snowboarding for a long time, but you mm -hmm. recently got injured. Right? Yep, That's torn my MCL, but I'm like 90%, so I'm hoping to snowboard this weekend. <laughs> and uh, I, I remember us talking about this briefly. Any interest in getting into the schemo slash split board world of yes. like exploration snowboarding? Yes, big interest. And that's, again, another reason why I did Van Life too is, like, to befriend these people who know all of this, like, know how to go um, in the backcountry of, of um, skiing and snowboarding, know how to split board, know to go into the hut trips, like, know what to do. And so, like, I don't have experience in that. So when you talked about just, like, your wilderness experience, I'm hoping to surround myself with people that can teach me and that already know about this. So I have high... Uh, um, I really want to do split boarding. Yeah, that that sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to get more into that realm as well. There's a little barrier to entry because I don't have a ton of dollars, but, you know, you pick up a thing here, pick up a thing there, and then ultimately, as long as you're seeking knowledge, I feel mm -hmm. like like that's really the key that keeps coming back to me when you're talking is like you're it's a skills exchange like you're going yep. somewhere you're super sick at like making like reels and like social media and marketing and so you share that with someone and then they share with you how to go spear fishing or you know like something like crazy like that I, don't mm -hmm. know. I think the the van life community offers like so many different walks of life and so many people that possess different skills that when you come together there's like a massive exchange mm -hmm. yeah i completely agree um i keep seeing a lot of these like questions of what i do for income i did mention it earlier but for those of you that are new um i worked corporate eight years as a marketing director and an event producer and then when i started van life i opened my up my own marketing uh, company where i do like consultations videography um photography voiceovers um white listing licensing all for um all four brands yeah uh and it would be cool to get into consulting um a little bit more too but yeah that is what i do and then i do um like affiliate links and then i get uh also have investments so like i have yeah i put a lot of money into the market um because again i worked corporate for eight years so i had i saved up i didn't own a home i have two cats <laughs> tough rented. week for the market tough week for the market this I, week. Tough, <laughs> yep yep tough week <laughs> But uh, that's neither here nor there. We'll, we'll bounce back either way. <laughs> so, Quinn, we're, um, we're approaching an, uh, on an hour here. Um, okay. If there's anything else you want to say, obviously people can find you on your Instagram, Quinn Gable, and then soon to come is your YouTube and new website. So I now know Quinn there, Ben that. Wait, no, Quinn. Quinn, Quinn one there. more time. Quinn there, done that. Quinn there, done that, right. But that's a sneak peek. That's a sneak peek coming out soon. Yeah, that's a secret. No talking about that yet. Oh, but, that's a secret. Um, and then Bali, of course, people can yep. check out your links for yeah. going to these with you. So yep. if there's anything else that I missed. Yeah. 
if you have any other questions or you want me to make a video about some, something specific, you can always slide into my DMs. Um, if you're solo van life and you want to hang out, let me know. But other than that, I'm just really grateful for um, you to give me the platform to do this. This is really awesome, and I appreciate it. And thank you for bringing um, so many people with wilderness experience uh, on this platform. Because, I mean, I saw someone being like, you're inspiring me so much. And, like, your stuff inspires me so much to learn things that I had no clue how to learn outside. So thank you for taking the time to do it. Wow, thank you. That means so much. Uh, yeah, and I, I had an excellent time. Thank you for coming on. Quinn, you are definitely wild. And thank you, everybody else, for joining. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye, Quinn. <laughs> see ya.